Let's just cut the kayfabe. You know, do you know who I am? I'm primetime 99 pimp on a blimp. I wear the tuck friendly bathing suit. I've done it all. I've done this gimmick a million times over. I know what it's like to put on the dress and try to be funny. And for me, I'm just being honest with you, Josh. It's caused me a lot of backlash. As a matter of fact, you get a lot of hate for doing it, not necessarily from the left-leaning people that you're making fun of, but you'll never be accepted by the right side either because they're always gonna consider you a freak. I'm just telling you this as a friend. I know this is a bit, I know it's a gimmick, and I know you're trolling, and I, I love it because I do the same thing, but how long do you think you can do this for, dude? I mean, let's just be real. I mean, I, I know this as a comedian, you know this as a person that I've been on reality TV, you've been on reality TV, and I am a fan of yours, Josh, and I have the most utmost respect for you, and I'm not just saying that. How long are you gonna do this bit for? I mean, it, it can only last so long. You can only put on the toke friendly bathing suit so long. Well, it's not a bit for me. It may have been a bit for you, mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's how I feel. Um, Josh, you're and, lying. You know, what did your parents say about this? Does your mom or dad know about this? Are you close to them? Uh, I'm close with some family members, yeah. And I'm sure that they do not like this because they know that Josh is a bodybuilding guy that likes to slam babes. That's why he's on The Bachelorette. And they know this is all a gimmick and you have a million Instagram followers and now you're going super viral and I know what that's like. And uh, what, what people don't understand is when you have the mindset that you and I have, we don't care, I don't care. People can make fun of you. That's not me like kind of confronting you right now. It's not gonna hurt your feelings. But your family, they could be embarrassed by this. Do you not feel any sort of you know, guilt to them? Not for you, because I see you're like me. We don't have a lot of shame. But your loved ones, they know it's a bit. I mean, I mean why are you gonna do this to them for so long, Josh? Um, yeah, I'm just living my authentic truth, um, and... Come on, is... Josh! Show me too! Quit playing with me! I'm the pimp on a blimp, Josh! I can do this bit, I can do this dance with you, we can joke around, and I'll, you know, I'll be nice, and I'll say all the transgender shit. But you know it's a work! This is a gimmick! This is like professional wrestling! Sorry, I'm not trying to yell at a beautiful lady like you, but... What are we gonna do? This is a joke that has stretched on for too long. Take off that dress, sir. You know you aren't fooling anyone with that act. Ladies and gentlemen, and only ladies and gentlemen it is and shall always be. I am an 18-year-old high school student and wanted to take this time to bring to your attention the current issue with biological men claiming they are women and in turn truly believing that they are entitled to use women's spaces. There was an incident within our district that occurred recently regarding a transgender woman who really is a bio biological man having an altercation with a young woman at MLK High School. It was infuriating when I had seen the video on social media, but what was detrimental to this is the fact that this man is and has been using the women's restroom and locker room. Firstly, the question we must address is why are we affirming the mental confusion of this boy and putting the safety of women in jeopardy by allowing mentally confused men to use the women's spaces? Of course, any male who claims he is a woman will accept it, but what about the women? What about the true girls like myself who are female down to our DNA? Why don't we ever get a say in whether or not we are comfortable with this? The truth is, we aren't. The majority of us aren't, and yet nothing has been done to protect the safety of these women. I will conclude with this. It all starts with you. You are in charge of the safety of us women and our and the parent and the kids of our parents. So, so please do something about it. Thank you. Predators are now choosing to put on dresses and claim to be trans to prey on innocent young women. And the society is just affirming their actions just to be woke. Imagine little girls having to use the same restroom as grown men who like to play dress up. The world surely has gone mad. Before I state my question, I just want to honor that we are all standing on the land that belongs to the Ojibwe and Anishinaabe people. Uh, Thank Dakota. you for mentioning that. I meant to mention that at the beginning of my yep. speech, yep. but I'm glad that Dakota, you Dakota, Northern Cheyenne, um, and they have been here for time immemorial, and so that leads into my question. So um, you make the statement that transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely, and so I'm going to ask you a question about that, but prior to that, I want to just state that for 5,000 years BC, Gala transcribed and androgynous trans priests of Sumerian goddesses have been around and noted. 200 to 300 years before Christ, in ancient Greece, there were gods worshipped by Gali priests who wore feminine attire and identified as women. 
Um, since we are standing on Anishinaabe land, Turtle Island, which is the nation that we live under, um, has uh, had I don't live two under spirited Turtle people. Island. All right, well, maybe you should read a little more indigenous knowledge books. Um, and indigenous communities have used two spirit uh, personas for the in entirety of their culture. And so that leads me to my question. When you say that transgenderism must be eradicated from public life entirely, I ask you, Mr. Knowles, how can we eradicate something that has been here? as long as humans have. Well, yeah, there have been all sorts of crazy, terrible ideas for a very long time, too. You, you, you're pointing to civilizations that committed human sacrifice, okay? You're saying that some ancient pagan tribe worshipped demons and therefore we need to castrate children. That's not a good argument. Yes, that's true. There were all sorts of terrible tribes. In fact, as recently as a little over 500 years ago, the Aztecs here in the Western Hemisphere slaughtered 80,000 people in a sacrifice to one of the demons that they worshipped within the span of four days. That's not a recommendation of doing Doing that. I don't think that we ought to consider it. Though, unfortunately, in our increasingly pagan and liberal culture, we do commit human sacrifice to the tune of 800,000 babies a year sacrificed through abortion. And, and it, it would make the as Who made this girl the spokesperson for Native Americans and indigenous people? And who told her it was a good idea to use instances from eras when murder all in the name of sacrifice to their deities to prove her point? Yeah, but it's not very good because they don't have access to... Because it's socialistic. No. no. <laughs> they, they have universal health care in plenty of European countries and it works just fine. The, re the flaws of the Native American... So, so, so I'm curious, how did Vermont's experiment in universal health care go? I'm, I'm not from Vermont, so I don't know these things. I didn't hear your response. Say that I'm again. I'm not from Vermont, so I don't know these things. I moved here like two months ago. Yeah, I still, I still can't hear what you said. Say it one more time. You're, you're wearing a mask. It's kind of hard. Can you say it again? I moved here like two months ago. I'm not from Vermont, so yeah, I don't okay. know these things. Right. So Vermont tried single payer. They had to abolish it. It was a total disaster. So look, I think the best way that to help Native American communities is to help all people through empowerment and education. Instead, we tried a heavy-handed government approach of intervention of the Bureau of Native American Affairs, of universal health care. And if you want to go see a socialist dystopia, go to a Native American reservation. I, I, maybe you have. Maybe you worked on Native American reservations before. I've been to plenty. They're, they're depressing. They're government addicted, unfortunately, in more ways than one. They're very, very corrupt. And this is something I want to ask you. Would you self-identify as a socialist? Is that fair to yeah. say? Yeah. Okay. Ish. I'm not a liberal. I'm, a, I'm more social. I'm okay. Liberal. Socialist yeah. and liberal are different words, and I think conservatives confuse that a lot. They are completely different things. Okay. Okay. No, no we don't. So uh, I, I'm, I'm just curious, as someone who would say you're a socialist, what would be a country you think works well that's a socialist country? There are no socialist countries right now. There are no so has, it, ha has there ever been a socialist country? Truly socialist? No. Okay. So let me. So you your view your world view is on something that's never existed and currently doesn't exist. Is it too? Is it a? Is it a bad thing to be like? Pro change. Okay, so just just so we're clear, no. um, yeah, the type of change you're advocating is horrifying. Um, but <laughs> so it's never existed, doesn't, and so I would say Venezuela, Cuba, North Korea, formerly Vietnam, the Soviet Union. Those were those are not and were not socialist countries. Those country the. Disastrous effects in those countries were directly contributed by U.S. intervention. There was a, there were multiple coups done by the CIA in All those right, countries. So let, let, let's take hold on, guys, hold on. Let, let, let's take. Let's just, I'm just curious. And so, how on earth did Fidel Castro taking over Cuba have anything to do with U.S. intervention? There was plenty of like sanctions. Like economically, Cuba was completely cut off. There was no. They tried to assassinate him plenty of times. There were no, no, so no. many the things. The fact that the they're communist. Did. Yeah. We had what to do with that? We didn't have anything to do with that. But we, after they, after a communist regime took over, they had a. Yeah. So yeah. let me ask you. So, so you're. So first of all, Zimbabwe was not communist. Burkina Faso. Thomas Sankara. Say that again. Thomas Sankara. Burkina Faso. Before he was assassinated, he was actually. How like, about Mugabe? He wasn't a communist. How about Joseph Stalin? He wasn't a communist. He himself How about communist. Mao Zedong? He wasn't a communist. Yeah. Pol Pot. 
plenty of terrible people have called themselves plenty of different names. North Korea, oh, so you get North to be Korea the judge. Got it. Dem right. So I just want to make sure we complete the point. You believe in something that doesn't exist, has never existed, and even though the people that call themselves the things that you believe, you say they weren't really that, which is the most important point. Socialism is always judged against an impossible utopia, and they judge markets against a reality. And here's the truth of the matter that markets, which you enjoy comfortably in Western society, is the most proven affluent creating machine in human history. And I would just challenge you to do one thing. Please stop believing in a utopian nightmare and start looking at things around you that are good, that are true, that are beautiful, that work, and are consistent with the natural law. You'll, you'll be a much happier person. Nothing to see here, guys. Just another wokey who has no idea what she's saying, but because she thinks she is passionate about the subject, then that justifies and validates her opinion. This, if you guys think the wage gap exists, if Brian could hire the two of us and get away with paying him, get away with paying me 75% less, why wouldn't he do that? And why wouldn't the entire workforce be basically all female? Like there's this great loophole that corporate America has that you just like get to save 25% on expenses if you hire women. It's true. So, does, so wait, so does the wage gap exist? I just think I, you're brainwashed. Something? You think I'm brainwashed? <laughs> you just said you're a feminist and you can't even give me one way to explain why you are. Feminism. That's to say. Just, I just think Feminism to me means that I feel empowered, okay? Like I just feel like, uh, I feel like women should be able to exercise their independence. That's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of. How can uh, you not exercise your independence mm -hmm. in today's society? Um, I just feel like that there's a lot of social norms that, uh, that, I don't know if I'm best, best explaining this, but I mean, I, I think that there is a lot of, um, expectations for women to behave a certain way. And, um, I think like pushing out of those, those norms or those cultural norms is, um, Are there not expectations for men to behave a certain way too? Yes, there are. Absolutely. And, but when I say that I'm a feminist, I mean like I feel like like females are empowered. That's that's what that means to me. But implied in that I feel like is that there are societal forces that are stripping you away of your empowerment. So I guess what I'm saying is wage gap aside, how are you not empowered? I, w I would almost argue it's easier to start a business in America as a woman. You have preferential treatment when it comes to loans, mm -hmm. uh, preferential hiring processes, um, literally just because you're a woman. Women are the majority of college graduates. Um, I mean, it, life uh, being a, a, a woman, I feel like in some ways kind of life on easy mode if you p play into the corporate structure. So how are you not I mean, they literally have empowerment programs that they don't allow men, let alone straight white men in. So there's literally a multi-billion dollar corporate push to empower women. So how are you not empowered? I, I'm just saying, like, I, I am a proponent of, of feeling empowered. I'm a proponent of female empowerment, too. But People say my boss is a misogynist and he is a female co-host, but I think female empowerment doesn't come from pretending that there are issues in society saying that we're unequal to men and I think if you guys all consider you know you think I'm brainwashed you can think that but you also espouse an ideology that you can't even give me literally one example why you actually believe it let alone define it but you just slap that label on because that's what mainstream society has told you to believe. So I think you're actually the one who's brainwashed. I'm brainwashed. Imagine listening to someone school you on everything you've ever gotten wrong including the flaws in your ideology. And all you can come up with as a perfect enough response is, you're brainwashed. How typical. Something respectfully, I come from a very toxic household too. I've been working since I was 16 years old. I've never sold my body. I did everything I could to get to where I'm at. I'm a licensed therapist now and I content create. Do you know how hard it took me to get to where I'm at and I've never sold my body? So when you're saying that, it's kind of like of an excuse. I'm not trying to attack you whatsoever because like I said, it's your life, whatever, but you're using the excuse of having a toxic family. I didn't have a mom. I didn't have a lot of things growing up. So you could work at a warehouse. You can do a lot of things. I make six figures now because of social media, Sir, but I had to get up there. I used to bartend just like her and I didn't want to do that. I used to wash dishes. I used to work in a freaking warehouse loading trailers. You think a girl wants to do that? No. So when you guys are saying this stuff and then talking about God, it makes no sense. If you cared a lot about God, you'd follow the way he he wants you to be, not however you think you should be. And like the excuses to me, I'm not trying to be rude, but it just sounds crazy. Well, you know, like I know it sounds crazy like I do. 
than I sin, but I still pray to God every day. Mm -hmm. So if well. I if I so. steal every single day and tell God, please, thank you, like, how does that work? If I go hurting people in this world and then say, oh, God forgives me, you're not learning your lesson. Imagine saying, because I didn't get enough love from mommy and daddy, I'm going to open an OnlyFans and start making I guess everyone who had a traumatic childhood and came from a toxic family has a free pass to act in whatever way they wish because that is the only way to justify your experiences. Okay, you guys are all just like really misogynistic. How do you define misogyny? <laughs> I'm just asking how you define misogyny. Can I go? Um, are you okay? Like, do you want, you, like, you want to go as in leave? Can I please go? Yeah, no, look, if you want to leave, you can leave. I was hoping we could continue having a conversation, but, um. Just let her go. Okay, I mean. This girl had a full-on breakdown because she couldn't define a very important word she and her movement use every day. These are the same people that think they can lead and be strong and independent. Just from looking at her, you can tell she's the type who's used to crying to get out of things. We are in a different time now. Back in the day, women could not work at all. So they had to marry a man they so they right. can survive they and... Yeah, I think they had it right. <laughs> they should have kept it like this. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> they had to marry a man or whatever the case is just to survive at that point. And so they had traditional roles, which was I'm not at work all day. So I'm at home. I'm cooking. I'm cleaning. I'm taking care of the children. I'm making sure your lunch is packed. I'm making sure you're good. And I'm here to serve you. OK. And what I realized is there's a lot of modern men that want a traditional woman, but they don't want to be a traditional man. So you want a woman to come home from a job just like you did clean cook do the laundry take care of the kids and handle everything in the household and you guys are both going to work do you see how that don't make sense no it does it make sense, sense and yes i do want you and to do that. do that and then because guess what when the tub or the light break down you not fixing it but item. that's an everyday no, job be, be the hell it's quiet everyday, right now it's see that's the problem day job. that's the problem You're are not you delusional no i no. don't give a it's an everyday job for a woman to come home, cook, clean, and take care of the kids first and also all, go to a job like a man. So you're all, telling me that yeah. a woman has to go work like a man every day and a man goes work and he's tired when he gets home. A woman's not tired. She has to clean, cook, do the dishes, do the laundry. Are you kidding me? I the have a better question. Happened, I have a better the question. The reason why that happened and the reason why that was going on back in the day is because a woman was not working. A woman my was like going is, to work every day. Okay, but my question is, why don't you want to do that? What are you talking about? Why don't I want to do that? You know how fucking tiring first, that is? Have you done that? First of all, I do it every day. First of all, <laughs> yeah. For, for a second, first second of all, person. first of all, for a man, a messy Lazar, ass man and children. I have can't. you first done of all, that? I can't first of all, Lazar, what? Yelling doesn't mean you're winning an argument. It's a sign of low intelligence. You can lower your voice and speak to me. When you know you have no argument, and so you have to raise your voice and speak over everyone else to seem like you are making a point. But the statistics don't lie. We know that if you raise the minimum wage, two thirds of people in this country on the minimum wage are women. They need that help. We know that there is assault on women's health care rights from this administration, things Jess, like that. Jess, Jess, yeah? Jess, please, please. I hate this, this selective feminism that we hear on the left all the time, okay? Well, don't make this a feminism huh? issue because it's not a feminism <laughs> But it issue. is when you're because going out and attacking on, women, Candace you're not. I'm not done. I'm not done. OK, when you're going out and attacking women, you are not a feminist. This is not defensible whatsoever. And you sit here and you say that you what? care about mothers. The basis of this is that people are upset that illegal immigrants are being separated from their mothers. Why don't you refocus some of that energy to the black community? They've been having their family separated. In fact, it's subsidized in the black community. You appreciate single motherhood. You are given more mother for more, more money. To Why do they do this instead of focusing on the real issues at hand? They bring up topics like feminism and women's rights when they need it to favor their political agenda. Selfish people will always do selfish things, and they will always remain that way. So deal with. So we have. Is he bisexual or he's straight? No, he's not bisexual. Oh. <laughs>
<laughs> Baby, I like a real man. Okay. All right. A real man. I would say that a real man wouldn't allow his woman, not even allow, wouldn't get into a serious relationship with the woman that is open on her end and other men are smashing her. He's not secure in his position in a relationship to set boundaries and say, hey, I don't want you talking to other women and other men. So therefore, he is insecure and it is an ego. He lacks ego. He lacks confidence. No. Well, so when you speak of a real man, you're speaking of my father. That's a real man. So why don't you date a man like your father? <laughs> oh, I'm looking for a man like my daddy. What's I'm looking going for like on a man here? like my daddy. Time out. A man Paul, doesn't because what you, what you convert and what, who, you, <laughs> Look, who you claim to be makes you quick. a real man. A real man is what you stand by and what you live by every got single it. Real day. Quick, real my, quick. my father is a man that wakes up and he's you. peaceful. He prays for me. He sends me good energy. I got it, Nay. That's, that's, that's I a got man. it, Nay. Calm down. He should have asked her if her dad would be happy the fact. I cut you off, I'm the host. You got to stop talking. We're not going to go on these long I'm not going to stop talking because you the host. Because when you speak, I give you nothing. Time out, time out, time out. Mm -hmm. If you're not, not gonna, respect. it's very simple, Nay. If you're and not going leaving. to, so we're gonna stay here, we're gonna debate all day, baby. I'm a boy. Fair enough, fair enough. Baby. I love That's you. what you think. You're gonna love are, me too. Yeah, these are the rules of the podcast, and all, all the right. girls heard. So only the host could speak time when out. everyone else Listen, is talking. You still speak, yeah. time out. You still speaking while I'm speaking. I am. Got it. Slow it down. All right. right? You're, you just submitted that. Don't invite nobody your on man, your podcast. You, you just submitted that them. your Go man ahead, ain't shit. that man, that your father is that man. No, he is that man. No, he he's ain't that, your he, man isn't that, that man. You I just submitted that. Care of. I don't have to you cheat just with him. That. No. I feel sorry but for listen, whoever you date because, uh, baby, we, I could never be trapped we, in the we, box. We actually going to end this. You up out of here. It's time for you to go. I ain't going nowhere. And I let him talk. The whole time he spoke. And it leaves. But we know his part. It is what it is. Nah, I'm good, mama. I'm good, mama. Don't touch me, mama. Mama, don't touch nice me. You. Nah, come on, man. Step out. Respectfully. Step out. <gasps> Step out. Classic. She wants a man who's going to be open to watching her get passed around by different men while he remains loyal to her and to continue being her provider. The double standards she set are so high up even she can't reach it. And how it's reflected outwards to other people, right? I'm adding. This value, this value, this value, this value, this value, like a mathematical formula to come up with, that equals four. What are you doing to come up with that other than, I just think that we should have high self-esteem so that we, because I just think so. Because I know I'm a good person. Because frankly, if we want to get aesthetic, I don't have a busted face, I'm fat. And if people want to reduce my value because of my fatness, that's not my problem. And that is not the um, ideology I hold for myself. Um, I am someone who is pursuing weight loss, not for aesthetics, not for looks, but for my health. And it is something I'm moving forward with because I have been for the past two to three years now working on my self-love and loving myself into a place to care enough about myself to take my health back into control when I was being consistently shamed when I was gang stalked on r slash fat people hate in 2015 when I have looks like it worked I'm Disavowed. still speaking I mean it looks like it worked I'm still right? speaking it you works get, because you're gonna you change know, you're really great at over talking and being disrespectful and I'd love the opportunity to get my point but, across okay but the, so just just to cut in here a little bit the original question was rate your looks because <laughs> yeah. you mentioned your personality you have a great personality or whatever it is and i and like he i said my fatness doesn't devalue me why so i'm an a why doesn't it because um, i think that fat you can think. be beautiful it's my assessment of my it's looks perspective. right yeah but why yeah, okay. why is it that your why own assessment of your looks has right? nothing to do with how the external world perceives you that's my because problem I don't give a shit. right because you, you don't care so there's no I real value judgment I don't care about other people's how opinion can, of how me. Can it's you not more important than the opinion of I want of myself. Yeah, and it if is. You don't, if you don't live that way, that sucks for if you. If there's a value judgment of how you would self-assess your own looks, the only possible conceivable metric I could even think of would be the perception of how other people view you for your value. Do these girls realize that they can choose to love themselves and have a high self-esteem without being delusional narcissists? Or there's the flesh, there's the stuff, but then there's the form, which which tells you about what that thing is. And so uh, my liver might look Look a lot like your liver but they're different livers one's mine for instance and one is yours so you don't have a right to mine and I don't have a right to yours because your liver is for you and my liver is for me and we 
we all know this and we all act that way. That's why you're not coming up here and attacking me and ripping my kidneys out and selling it on a market in Wuhan or something like that. But, but we pretend that we don't uh, believe these things because it helps to advance an argument which is totally indefensible and unnatural, uh, namely that we ought to kill a baby or something like that. So your organs are for you and you alone. Yeah. You get to decide what to do with them. But a woman doesn't get that choice about her womb, about her ovaries, Well, the baby is uterus. not an organ of no, hers. A so baby is an individual human being. you get to make choices about your internal organs, but a living, breathing woman does not. Well, that, okay, I understand. No, that. I don't think you do understand because... <laughs> I, I don't think you understand very well at all, unfortunately, because you're suggesting that the baby is a, an organ of the woman, which is preposterous, obviously. You know, the baby is differentiated from organs by its DNA, by how it will develop, by, I don't know, I don't think she's listening to the rest of my answer. <laughs> right. We're not worth listening to, Matt. <laughs> Matt! Like a true coward, she ran away when she came face to face with real facts and opposition. That gender can be fluid and it does not affect other people. It does not affect other people's lives. I literally just showed you an example where it affects other people. Women who don't want to share those spaces. Now you're saying that those women's spaces should be defined by their biological sex at birth. Yes or no? I don't know. I'm what I'm saying. So it literally affects other people. I'm listen, I'm you're really nice, but uh, I, it's, it, you, the cult got you. The cult. He, the you cult. Think, you think people being told they can have a certain gender or a certain sexuality is a, is a cult? People thinking you can pretend to be something you're not and the whole world's going to go along with it, including the people, yes, it affects, is a cult. And you, look, I, I, I feel for you because... Nothing to see here, just another wokey who has been brainwashed to forget everything she was ever taught in biology. Mr. All, members of the board, my name is Craig Schubert. I'm the mayor of this city. It has come to my attention that your educators are distributing essentially what is child in the classroom. I've spoken to a judge this evening. She's already confirmed that. So I'm gonna give you a simple choice. Either you choose to resign from this Board of Education, or you will be charged. Thank you. He said what he said, and didn't need to repeat himself. If you cannot be trusted around children, then you shouldn't be around one. You said that like this, like being transgender is this new ideology. Yeah. It's not. Um, there's evidence of people who were transgender in ancient Greece, Rome. Judaism is an example of a religion that acknowledges, I think, six or seven genders. I don't think that's quite true. And, and my evidence for that would be in the, in the very first book of the Torah, in, the, in Genesis, uh, one of the most prominent lines is that in the beginning, God created man, both male and female created he them. It's not Judaism, um, I think what the original translation, I, I can't cite my source right now, okay, but um, the, from what I've learned going to different like religious schools is that Ju they- Jewish schools? Ju just synagogues, temples, I've tried and like experienced different religions. They said that the original text said Adam and Eve as in one being, one- Well, like, man, yeah, man, so uh, in the earliest chapters of Genesis, you have the creation of man in Adam. And then Eve is created from Adam's rib, uh, but she would be the other sex. What you're citing is this line that a lot of people who are pro-transgender will say, which is, you know, actually in some Native American tribe that I can't quite name right now, uh, I'm sure they believe in a third and a fourth and a fifth gender, but that just isn't true. That is a, uh, that's that been made up by white liberals. You know the movie Mulan, Disney? Disney Mulan? I haven't seen it, but I've All heard right. of it. Mulan, yeah. dresses as a man, right, goes to war. That's based off of true history. Oh yes, Cro cross-dressing has Not occurred in history. just cross-dressing, but people who in went Mulan, to- In did, Mulan, did the female character think she was a man? No. Oh, okay. If you are going to use a cartoon character to prove your point, then I guess that settles itself. Oh, I should point out, there are people in the back of the room who have put 
tape over their mouths as though they've been censored, as though they're not able to speak. So I'd just like to take the opportunity. Nobody is stopping you from speaking. Nobody is. We're actually inviting you to speak. If anybody would like to come up and ask a question, now's your opportunity. You can cut the entire line. Would anybody who has uh, masking tape over their mouths, well, you don't have masking tape. Oh, you can come ask a question, too. But uh, I, I mean specifically the people who are making a statement and saying, I am being censored. Would any of you like to remove the masking tape, which you put on yourself? and come up here and ask a question, or would you rather stand back there and play the victim? You claim you are being censored and your opinions are not being heard, but here you are placing tape over your mouth, which makes you unable to voice those said opinions that you have played the victim for all these time. Talk about the classic way of looking for attention. We should be having a conversation about whether we should even be doing these surgeries to people at 18. But certainly before 18, it's, it's absurd. I mean, do you, do, you, do you think that a 16-year-old can meaningfully consent to having their body parts removed? Do, do you? No? We do not. Yeah, we ask the questions. It's not for you. It's, uh, okay. Representative Hammer, you are recognized. No more questions? Okay. Uh, Representative Clemens, you are recognized. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, can you give us a summary of your educational background or your health care education experience? M Mr. Walsh, you recognized. My experience in health care? Your educational background. I'm just curious. You, 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 you've yeah. testified as to a lot of your own research, so I'm curious for what purpose you do that and what background you have to qualify you to speak to that. Well, my Mr. background Walsh. that qualifies me to speak to this is that I'm a human being with a brain and common sense, and I have a soul. And so, therefore, I think it's a really bad idea to chemically castrate children. That is my... Is that silence I hear? The silence is just so loud that it speaks for itself. Don't stutter, sir. Speak up. I'm not the same as a... Why? What's the distinction? I'm not having with people. Hang on. So, let me get this right. If One... a goes up to a guy's room and she just dances for him and he off to it, she's not... Yeah, that is a... Yeah, yeah that's the... That... So can, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm never going to let you evade, no matter how much you filibuster. Can I have to answer? There's many millionaires that have answer. Bella Thorne, Daniel Brugoli, many millionaires. <laughs> are finish, finish this way. <laughs> okay, maybe you've made nothing. Maybe you've made a couple thousand dollars. Congratulations. Wait, okay, well, I, I mean, what, I'm not what, a so, dude. I have a but I've also. How's that not? I made a lot more money than these girls sitting right here. So do you know what? Even people in my family then why have not encouraged keep an because it generates more income why just sit in my house all day and just live off of my savings i could do that but eventually you know that money's gonna run out maybe like in 10 15 years whatever it may take i thirty two thousand dollars in a month well how much do you make it doesn't matter but you're a millionaire close i'm almost to. she said yeah. close to. and i just had a c-section i can't like hypothetically if i were to work it's going to be hard and you know i just had the baby a month ago so but i mean if you're right if you're making excuses to do work how can you lecture people for making excuses when they're doing work i mean they're young so i was i had a you're young you're 26 i'm, not young. I'm almost 30. you're not walking around with a walker grandma <laughs> i mean i consider myself old so when i see like young girls i'm like you know you should have at least given it a chance you know i've been doing social media since 2016 i've almost a million followers i work my yeah. off for where i'm at now bye but you're still a i'm not a <laughs> how is it not it's online. You don't have to leave your house. You don't have to meet up with anyone. Why would that matter? Because that is a real. By definition, that is a problem. Is somebody who sells arrested. favors for money? You can get arrested for being a literal. Unless prostitute. you're no, unless you're in Nevada, right? That's the ranch. It's like an hour yeah, away so from Nevada. Yeah, so you can, so you can work legally. Nevada, what is the yes. actual distinction here? Between it doesn't a matter the difference. It doesn't matter. Listen, wait, 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 wait. Can I finish? Can I finish? Okay, listen. The difference between me. No. The difference between me. Can I talk? Can I talk? Can, I can anybody me? else talk? The no difference you. between me and them. I never have to work again. The difference. First of all, can someone call the child protection services on that lady? Using your pregnancy for clicks on a site? This is another level of weird. And then claiming to not be the true dirty human you are is just another level of crazy. The fact that African Americans in general commit more crimes than, than white people, like, change your mind on that at all? You can have stats on something, but it doesn't change the fact that every single person 
is an individual. I was reading this thing, it said whites and Hispanics are more likely to be shot by the cops than black people are. Police officers are 18 times more likely to be killed by a black man than a black man is to be killed by a police officer. Actually, blacks are shot less than white people. Problem with saying you're against the death penalty, but then allowing tons, millions of unborn babies to be sentenced to death in a facility. This can be over now, thank you. Yeah, I'm not gonna comment on that. I don't see it that way. I'm surprised that you're asking the question in that particular way. We're talking about a being that is not born, has not lived. You're not alive until you've been loved and wanted. So, homeless people that are not wanted, they have no family, they're not loved. We can just go out and take them off the streets, do whatever we want. They're not alive. You, I, I think you've just called an end to this. If that's your stance, I don't want to talk to you. Anymore. That's your stance. You said if someone's not oh, no, loved not. and wanted, they're not alive. Bye. In the face of truth, if all you can do is hide and decide to not accept it, then you should have no opinion. Oh, you're bending down. Are you sure you aren't going to break us? No, my actually in better shape than your I don't know. Maybe it's because I exercise and you don't. Yeah, because you exercise and I don't. There's a comment in my You need to leave me the hell alone. Yeah, okay. <laughs> literally means I get to talk about you but you don't get to talk about me but sadly that's not how the world works it must be such a dark time to be a free-thinking biologist in this era hi um I thought you had some really good points but I just wanted to ask you about um hybrids and stuff because I'm here studying biology and so we've learned a lot about genetic um, mutations and disorders and such and there actually are hermaphrodite human beings where they have both ovaries and um, testicles and that I have it right here it's actually a medical condition called ovotesticular disorder and there are also other genetic disorders where people are born with XXY XY or just X or just Y and such um, and while it may seem rare there are hundreds of thousands of people born with this each year and so going off of your fairy tale hybrid people they do exist, and so I'm just wondering how that would play into your view of there being a spectrum of gender, because... These are people who can get pregnant and also impregnate someone else? Um, yes. It, hermaphrodites, they have both no. ovaries no. and testes. No. no. Uh, they, 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 if, that, if such a person existed, that would certainly... Um, I would not include that part of my next speech, but... Uh, <laughs> Such a person does not exist. Now, it, intersex and, and the, now, the genetic deformities you're talking about obviously do exist, and I expected someone to bring that up in the, in the Q&A. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a fine point to bring up. Um, two things I would say to that. Number one, that actually has nothing to do with transgenderism, because when, we're if, if when we talk about transgender, we're talking specifically about intersex people, then we would just say intersex. But with transgender, most of the time, we're talking about men who, they don't have any deformity. They, they are just straight up men, clearly. Um, and they are identifying as woman, as a woman. So even if I agreed that what you're talking about is some sort of exception, that actually would have nothing to do with the transgender topic. But I don't think it is an exception because, as I said, I think a true uh, middle, you know, a true resident of the middle circle of the, of the Venn diagram would be someone who has the reproductive capabilities of both genders, and no one like that exists. I mean, to be not to be crude, but. There isn't anyone who can get themselves pregnant, right? And uh, that doesn't exist in the human kingdom anyway. So I don't think, I, I think what you're talking about there are people who have deformities. And so in their case, it would be more difficult than usual to determine what their actual biological sex is because the usual indicators aren't there or aren't as obvious, but that doesn't mean that they don't have a biological sex. It's just not as uh, clear. It must be such a dark time to be a free thinking biologist in this era and time where everything you are taught and has proven to be scientifically correct is wrong. 
because a few confused people on social media got mad because they wanted to wear dresses and play dress up when they were younger. Jacob, let me ask you this. How do you think they would have large-scale, long-term studies about the effects of these drugs and these surgeries on children when we only started doing it to children at a large scale a few years ago? So how could that even exist? Yeah, I think scale is probably one of the more prevalent challenges of these studies. Okay, so we're already hearing that there are challenges in these yeah, studies. Yeah, every study has challenges. Like, any scientific truth, like all of the scientific truth that we take for granted today, they're built on methodologies that fundamentally have flaws. Like, if you want to make a specific critique, you can do that. If you're talking, Good. well, if you're talking about sample size, there are very well demonstrated statistical results that you don't need 10,000 people to get like a significant, a statistically significant value. Here, yes, no, you do. You don't. Here's, here's, no, absolutely not. It's like a very basic statistical fact. Here's no, you, like Jacob. A sample size greater than a thousand that can uh, like that has very nice asymptotic properties. Like Jacob, here's here's yeah. what I know. If you want to even begin to claim that a study has proven that castrating and sterilizing little boys helps them in the long run, then you would need to have a large sample size of children who've gone through these procedures and we've checked back with them in adulthood to see how they're doing. Those studies do not exist. They can't exist because we weren't doing this to kids at anywhere near this scale even five years ago, let, let alone ten years ago. What that tells us, Jacob, is that the, the kids we have right now, they are the sample. Actually, okay? They the are case. the experiment. We are, we are experimenting on children right now. That's just demonstrably, you can easily demonstrate that that's not the and case. And are you, Jacob, are, are you able to just use your common sense as well? I mean, you can rely on studies and you can just shout the word study at me and then start, no, I'm not you can start, like, let me, let me finish, let me finish. Sorry, sorry. You can, you can shout about studies and, and list random medical organizations. That doesn't impress me. There was a time, there was a time when, when every medical organization would have told you that, you know, bloodletting is the way to cure every disease. Um, Sure. There was a time when every medical organization told you that the vaccine, you know, stopped transmission. So, yeah. but here, here's, here's what I want to know. Are we able to just use common sense as well? And, and, and based on common sense, determine that it is certainly not a good idea to sterilize and castrate children and remove body parts from children before they are possibly old enough to consent to those procedures. Can't we just, don't we know that just based on basic moral decency and common sense? Sure, but you're trying to make causal statements about the impacts of medical interventions. Um, you need to demonstrate that with science. And I'm not mentioning, and I'm, I'm not like making an ethos argument, oh, like look at this organization. I'm saying that there are like very rigorous ways to substantiate your claims and the people that are spending Lots of time are doing that, and what they and they come to conclusions that are very different from the ones that you say. Uh, I'm not making an appeal to ethos. Anybody can look look up these studies and just see how they're done. Right, and and these are also these are also studies being done by the people who are who it just so happens are profiting from the procedures that they I say can, work, you, you which is really interesting. Like, but. Do you think do you, do you think your professors are getting paid by like some? Yeah, a lot you of them think, are. You think there's somebody like paying your pro your professors for? I think you should. How do you think it works, Jacob? Because that's very unrealistic. Do you think they're not being paid? No, they ain't doing I, this for I, free. I, I tell you that. No, 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 no. I, I, they're they're definitely being paid. Um, but like, if there's some shady organization paying them, like, I, I I'm sorry that's sort yeah, of well, silly. Like, talk with your professors. That's like sort of silly. Okay. Um. Let me at How least can ask, you know anything? Oh, like, oh, there's always some conspiracy. Of I, I, I think you can know things without asking for permission sometimes sure, sure. from professors to say that you know them. No, I'm just saying. And like, one of those things that you can know is that it's never okay to castrate a child. I, I don't need, Jacob, you. Thank you, Matt. Okay. All right. Good conversation. Imagine using all those words and still can't pass your point across. This sure is a waste of four years of education. Let me ask you this question. Let me ask you guys this question. Well, okay, if you'll stop chanting, I'll, I'll address your point. Here's something interesting. Where is Dr. Ford? 
You know, this is really interesting. When I noticed that when, 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 when Roy, hold on, don't shout at me. You'll have a chance to ask questions. When Roy Moore was attacked by all these women, he, he, he oppressed me, he did this, he did that. And suddenly, when he's defeated, they all melt into air. This is Karl Marx, all that is solid melts into air. Suddenly, the media, hold on, don't shout at me. Don't shout at me. I'll be, I'm, no, you, you came voluntarily. Did I ask you to come? No, don't shout at me. Uh, I'm defending fascism. No, I'm exposing you as a fascist. Because, because. Do you realize, uh, I'm, I'll tell you how. You asked me a question. Hold on. Are you familiar? Are you familiar with the black shirts in Italy or the brown shirts in Germany? Do you realize that they would go to campuses, goons, and would stand in the back of the room? And when somebody tried to make an intelligent presentation and answer questions, they would shout them down, yell at them, try to intimidate them, and count as success if they could get the event canceled and the speaker threatened. But see, the problem is sometimes you get speakers like me who are not scared of people like you. We recognize your frauds. <laughs> I recognize, I recognize that ultimately you are afraid of ideas. You're not willing to engage with me. Yes, you're afraid of ideas. You're not afraid of fascists. You think I pose a threat to you? I'm an immigrant. I came to America with nothing. What threat do I pose? When they finally meet someone who's not afraid to call them out on their nonsense and put them in their place. It's, um, yeah, you've had a lot of states recently in the last few years take action to ban, uh, well, I guess you, should, uh, you would say, ID verify at the state level access to internet pornography, which is of course caused companies like MindGeek and Hub to freak out and say we're not going to allow you to access it in the state at all, which really kind of gives you some insight into the psychology of the average porn producer, right? Where they're like, oh, you're going to make it so minors can't view the content? Well, we're not going to do business with you anyways. And so it's like, okay, what really is the intent here behind a lot of this content? And also, I really don't think it's a complicated issue, honestly. Uh, I think that, you know, we can debate about things, but ultimately it's like when you get a group of smart guys in those positions of power, near the levers of power, they can figure out how to do pretty much everything. I mean, this is the country that put a man on the moon or constructed a propaganda apparatus sophisticated enough to convince people it did. That seems to be significantly more difficult than just banning pornography, in my opinion. Um, and it is true, a lot of your friends have made videos that were mocking me. I did not appreciate that. But I did see as well, you were mocking me from being of average height. I can't control that. I can't control my genetics. That wasn't very, you were mocking me. I did not appreciate that. Asking my followers if I should wear heels tonight, and I did not. I so never I mocked know. on her appearance, and I, there's plenty of subject matter there, believe me, but I never did it. So I didn't appreciate that. But ultimately, jokes aside. Why should this even be a discussion? If you are going to stand there and debate that should be legal and easily accessible even to children because you have this sick, perverted version of free will, then you are part of what is wrong with society. The question for you is more based on discourse. Um, in a climate right now with what's going on outside and what can happen in here, the word bigot being thrown around, um, how do we maintain a level of intellectual discourse that keeps conversation happening instead of not happening. Use of the word bigot, uh, you gotta be very careful because when I was here at Dartmouth, I was, I was a freshman here in the aftermath of what's called the Berkeley Free Speech Movement. And it was all these guys who were like, free speech, free speech, free speech. And we supported them. Our newspaper on campus was partly modeled on the Berkeley barb that was behind this kind of activism. It's only later I realized that when those guys take control, they will immediately start suppressing the speech of others. In other words, they don't actually believe in free speech. They believe in free speech for them. Bigot is a very loaded term. And because it has real sting and applies to real people, there's an effort to try to pin it on people. <clears throat> See, like these guys are walking out, they're too lazy to debate with me. That's they're not going to. I mean, they aren't. <clears throat> they aren't. Because, I'll tell you why. You want to win an argument by default, but can't even stand to defend your own beliefs. Talk about being lazy and entitled. Wait for the cops. You started driving at me, so I You can't drive for shit. Started driving at me, so I stopped. You drove the front of your car into mine. 
He drove the front of your car into mine. Here's the cops. The cops. Well, I'm pressing charges now. Stop. You can't press charges. I'm pressing charges. You're recording me without my permission, bitch. It's illegal. I'll do whatever I want. Knock it off. Yep. Stop recording me. Stop recording me. My phone. Stop hit my it. phone. She just spit on me. She hit my phone. She hit my car. Right, this thing already. Hold on, hold on. Let me throw my phone in my car. This is it, bro. What the is this? How are you gonna arrest me? Stop. You're not under arrest right now. How are you gonna arrest me? I got places to be. Bro, I got places to be. What the? Oh, bro. Bro, you can't. That's tough. You know? He cannot record me. And you can't hit him. Okay? I just hit him. When you are a whole grown adult woman and can't even maintain simple decorum, how are you going to be the cause of the issue and still get mad over the outcomes? Causing trouble and still claiming to know your rights is crazy work. Talk about not being very demure. Belt, is that belt from leather or is that a an artificial? Yeah, it's vegan leather, yeah. Okay, but it's leather. Yeah, it's not someone's skin. It's it's so it's an actually an artificial product. Yeah, it's vegan. Yes. No, it's an artificial product. Yes. That's the question I'm asking. Yeah, no one was shot in the head for my belt. Yeah, but it is it is leather. Yes, vegan leather. So it came leather. from an animal. No, it's vegan leather. So it's a synthetic material, and no okay. one was shot in the head. So that bit of synthetic material you've got that produced as much CO2 as driving my car from here to Darwin. That's correct. Can I see the scientific resource for Well, the you've only got to go to, go to WHO, the United fact, Nations WHO website. <clears throat> that will actually show you that for every 500 grams of synthetic material created, it uses as much, it produces as much CO2 as driving 2,000 kilometres. Animal agriculture is responsible for more greenhouse gases than the world's... If you think you can smack away other people's beliefs and opinions and try to enforce yours on them, then you have another thing coming. Solve your own problems before you talk about others. News will not replace us good people, yes or they're, no? They're bad people, Clay. People who are Nazis are bad okay, people, there we, Clay. That's not what I asked I've, you. I've answered this five times. No, you haven't. You've I, chosen to answer it the way you we'll want to answer it. go back in the tape later and You're see You're rewording... I you're think we'll rewording. Be able to find that I did you're it. rewording. This is exactly what Clay. What you're doing right now is exactly what the mainstream media did to Trump oh. and Charlottesville. It's the exact same thing. I gave a perfectly clear answer, and then you tried to pretend that I didn't. I feel so bad exactly. for you. I feel so badly for you. It's very easy to play a victim. Let me ask you this. Why do you feel Let bad? Let me ask you this. Oh, oh, hey, hey, guys, guys, guys. You can go all you want to. I don't care. Everybody. Okay, listen. I think our rhetoric is too extreme. Let me ask you How do you ask a question? And when the answer is not to your liking, you tell? The louder your voice is does not equal a more valid opinion. Admit to being wrong and learn. Or better still, stay home. Do not come to debate what you know nothing about. I just have to say that I object strenuously to your use of the word hilarious. Um, to me, this feels a lot like your reaction to being named in one of these manifestos. Now, you're, of course, not responsible for the words of somebody writing that document. But I do think that laughing at it is a real problem because these are real families that are impacted by this violence. And I think our efforts towards talking about this have to start from a place of mutual respect, which is what I've heard from, from this side of the table. Now, the reason we don't have those numbers, I want those numbers as much as you do, but the number, to say the numbers don't show something is simply not supported by the data. Okay, and I have 38 seconds left, Ms. Mulligan, if you, can, if you want to respond within that time. The only thing I would add is that um, it's in the name. Terrorism, domestic terrorism, it terrorizes us. It terrorizes us in our homes, it terrorizes us in our schools. Um, and, the, and to the points made by, by the other panelists, it is disproportionate um, to its impact on any individual life, and it's not... You reject the idea it's something that doesn't matter or doesn't really matter? Absolutely reject. Okay. All right, so here's where we are. Every, every member now has had five minutes and... Okay, and Mr. Clay, so we have two members who have not, so I'm going to go to the two members who have not yet, and, then, and we'll give an opportunity for a closing thought to any member who wants before we go. Am I next to respond, or is Mr. Meadows? I thought Mr. Meadows was Mr. next. Mr. Meadows, okay. Mr. Meadows is next, then Mr. Clay, then to you, Mr. Jordan. 
Uh, Ms. Owens, obviously this is a gang up on you. You know, we, we're, we're giving uh, these witnesses the ability to do a rebuttal on you. And so, um, you know, I, I find it unfair, Ms. Ballou. I mean, you know, candidly for you to show mutual respect and then you to go after Ms. Owens, it's not appropriate. So Ms. Owens, you can have four minutes and 34 seconds to respond. However, I'm gonna yield for a second? I'll, I'll yield to the... Thank you. Uh, I believe, Ms. Owens, when you used the word hilarious, it was, in, it was referencing the fact that no one had asked you a question. It wasn't to the subject matter of the hearing. Is that right? That is correct. And for ha to have another witness insinuate something that is not accurate is just not appropriate, Mr. Chairman, for how witnesses are supposed to behave in front of this committee. I also think you didn't say it doesn't matter about the subject matter of today's hearing. You said there are other subjects that matter as well, and maybe we should spend some time on those. Is that accurate? That is correct, and they matter much, 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 much more. And I have said that. I said that in my opening, and I will say it again you know that white supremacy and white nationalism is nowhere near, ranks nowhere near the top of the issues that are facing black America. And the reason that you are bringing them up in this room is because it is attempt to make the election all about race as the Democrats Not in do. my case, Ms. Owens, I'm sorry. Don't, please my, do not characterize my motive. Mr. Chairman, it's my time. Yeah, you, it's my got, time. You've got your time, Mr. Meadows. Every, you three more seconds. May, Every four years you bring up race and you knew exactly what I meant when I said hilarious and you just tried to do live what the media does all the time to Republicans, to our president and to conservatives, which you tried to manipulate what I said to fit your narrative, okay? I was not referring to the subject matter that is hilarious. I said it's hilarious that we are sitting in this room today and I've got two doctors and a missus and nobody can give us real numbers that we can respond to so we can assess how big of a threat this is. Because you know that it is not as big of a threat as you are trying to make it out to be so that you can manipulate. And the audacity of you to bring up the Christ Church shooting manifesto and make it seem as if I laughed at people that were slaughtered by a homicidal media maniac is, in my opinion, absolutely despicable. And I think that we should be above that. To try to assign reality or any meaning to a homicidal maniac writing a manifesto, which, by the way, let the record show, also stated Spyro the Dragon, the child cartoon, as a source of inspiration. He also cited Nelson Mandela as a source of information. I don't think, I don't think that Nelson Mandela has inspired mosque shootings. You can correct me if you think I'm wrong. You, are, you would rather assign meaning to a homicidal maniac than to actually address that I said to, the things that I said today that are actually harming black America. Number one, father absence. Number two, the education system and the illiteracy rate. Illegal immigration ranks high, abortion ranks high, white supremacy and white nationalism, if I had to make a list again of 100 things, would not be on it. This hearing, in my opinion, is a farce. And it is ironic that you're sitting here and you're having three Caucasian people testify and tell you what their expertise are. Do I know what my expertise are? black in America. I've been black in America my whole life, all 30 years, and I can tell you that you guys have done the exact same thing every four years ahead of an election cycle, and it needs to stop. When you think you can pick on someone and prove your point by tactfully picking on their word, choices do not try to hide away when they come back for you with facts that you cannot understand because you are too dumb to even hold an argument in the first place. Not propaganda. See it for yourself. We've both in been inside these places, and we've seen what is happening to non-human animals and it is an absolute atrocity. It is more than abuse. It's the largest Holocaust in history with three trillion individuals brutally murdered every year. Just You've human never visited consumption. my place. How do you know? Because if you had, you'd know that you are talking a load of <laughs> And what animals do you farm? What is your industry, may I ask? I run a goat dairy. I, first and foremost, um, I, I run a goat dairy. Now, for a start, we don't, our animals. Yes, you use euphemisms such as artificial insemination, which I is I don't great. use artificial insemination. I run my with my herd. My get the girls when the girls are in season and only then. And it's their choice, nature's choice. We allow our kids to stay on their mother. We only take the excess milk. So you are talking a load. But you're making profit from animals, right? You're, making, they're commodities am, to you. No, you, you're, I you have sell their milk them. so that they can get food. They get fed. They get fed better than I do. 
because our argument here is that no, your argument, your argument, in the first your place argument, to be made, your argument has modified. nothing to do with exactly what I do. So until you are you, abusing your animals, no, that's I'm not. what you do. Yes, let me ask You're you something. Profit if I'm them. abusing my animals, why is it that I can walk out and I can call them by name, and every single one of my animals come up and want to rub their faces on me? If I'm abusing them. Why are they so friendly to you? You want to claim a point so bad that you are not ready to listen to a voice of reason. That's how you know that we are declining as a society. Talk about abusing animals. Which Wokey getting humbled was your absolute favorite? And which Wokey got you kicking up your feet in laughter? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe so you can keep enjoying this train wreck.